This Saturday, Sunderland play host to Shrewsbury as we look for yet another win to try and solidify our playoff chances. But what team are going to be turning up to play us? Well, a glance at the league table shows us that Shrewsbury seemingly have little to play for. From their position and this many games left, they can not make the playoffs and seemingly not be relegated either. But it usually isn't true that teams will turn up here without any sort of game plan. A closer look at these statistics in the league table will give us some clue. They are pretty solid defensively. They've conceded only 40 goals. There's only Wigan and Rotherham in the entire league who've conceded fewer than Shrewsbury. But at the other end, they don't score very much either. With 42 goals, that's way behind Sunderland 69. They're 21st. They're in relegation spot in terms of goals scored. There's only the relegation candidates Gillingham, Doncaster and Crew who've scored fewer than Shrewsbury. So we have yet another team who are going to come here and try to shut up shop. And this is confirmed by looking at the statistics of the form of the last five games. In every single measure, Sunderland outranked Shrewsbury as clearly the better team. And what you must bear in mind here is that these are inflated statistics for Shrewsbury. Two of the last five games, they played against ten men. In fact, in the last game against Ipswich, they drew after Ipswich had a man sent off. If we were to look at the statistics for games where they've played recently against all 11 players of the opposition, then those statistics for possession are in the 35% and on target shots are about three per game. So we should really be expecting to dominate this. Such that Shrewsbury possess a goal threat, it comes from their top scorer, Daniel Uda. With 15 goals, he's a powerful runner with a good shot and a low centre of gravity who's hard to knock off the ball. He'll be playing up front. And alongside him is Ryan Bowman, with 12 goals in the league. A tall, strong forward. He's slow to decide sometimes and doesn't really impose himself physically as much as you'd expect. Nullify these two, and that's pretty much it from the Shrews. They do produce a pretty consistent corner with the ball delivered on the edge of the six-yard box, so Patterson is going to need to be alert here. Luke Lee takes the corners, he also takes the penalties, and he heads the assist charts with six. Joined with six assists is Elliot Bennett, their creative midfielder. Shrewsbury are pretty predictable in terms of their formation. They line up almost every single game in a 3-5-2 formation. So, what has Neil done when faced 3-5-2? He has either matched it with 3-5-2 himself, or played 4-2-3-1. It seems to depend on how he rates the attacking strength of the opposition and their midfield. Neil's thoughts here will decide if Bailey Wright starts on his own at centre-half or if he's joined by Danny Bath. But in truth, perhaps decisions here are dictated by two choices further up the field. Firstly, Stewart will start. He may not have scored since Burton nearly two months ago, but his value to the team is not just as a goal scorer. He is an excellent target man who holds the ball up well for others and brings people into the game, like here, for Dan Neal against Crewe. And last week, for Embleton at Oxford. So Stewart will start, but one question is whether Broadhead should start with him. Make no mistake, Broadhead is the best forward in the league. His shot-to-goal conversion rate is matched only by Will Keane of table-topping Wigan, and his shot accuracy is by far the best in the league. There is simply no other player who can get close to both of these stats. Broadhead is a major threat and, for me, should start. But Neil has to consider this choice with what he wants from his midfield and what he needs. And this brings us to the second question, whether to start Elliot Embleton. If you play Broadhead, you need to play Embleton as well. His crossing from deep is excellent. It's reminiscent of Nicky Summerby and virtually undefendable, and he's getting better at it. Broadhead is the best player we have at anticipating this. So the array of choice in midfield will dictate if Broadhead and Bart start or not, and they rest upon Neil's view of the opposition's attack and what he feels he needs to control that midfield. Maybe Neil has to choose between four or five of these midfielders. I think Gooch and Roberts have probably run down too many blind alleys of late, and Roberts in particular made a hash of some good chances last week. Perhaps these two don't start. Maybe they get to go again. Whatever the decision, it means that elsewhere on the pitch, things become easier and fall into place. Lastly then, the average points expectation per game this season. When we're at home, Sunderland averaged 2.2 points per game, and when Shrewsbury away, less than one. I think, on top of everything else, that says it all, and we really should be expecting a win tomorrow. So, how are the lads? 